Hello, Internet, and welcome back to Makers on Tap, where makerspace directors drink and talk about making stuff. We've got a super fun podcast tonight that I'm really, really excited for, for two reasons. One, we have two guests. <laughs> no, when am I going to regain this it. back? When am I going to regain this back that I'm actually trying to be back fucking on? Suck it. I'm, I, I've been at the hot tub. I've been on this one immediately when we planned it. Fuck off. <laughs> We have one guest and one <laughs> irate host. Um, and uh, let's start out by saying who all is here. So we've got Aaron. We've obviously got Chris. And then who hey. are you? Hey, I'm uh, Mark. Irate guest, if you want me to be. But I'm, yeah, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're, you're the super laid back guest. Chris is the <laughs> irate guest. All right, man. Done. Just out the door swinging. <laughs> and... It's been too long. Like, you know, whatever. Uh, Aaron, what are you drinking tonight? I have two cans of the triptych dank meme. Nice. Yeah. The dankest of memes. I'm glad I didn't yes. I'm glad I didn't go grab that out of the fridge because then I would feel awkward. Like we had the same sweater on. Chris, what are you drinking? <laughs> uh I, I'm tried and true. Um I would be drinking C B D um that Ooh. our wonderful friend got us, but I, I wanted to be somewhat level-headed tonight, um, so I am having a new Glarus, um, which is equally as good. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. And Mark, what do you have? Uh, I ordered a gin from my wife, but I don't think she's going to bring it because it's two in the afternoon and she thought I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mark, Mark's in Australia for people who are wondering it is not two in the afternoon where we are recording so we are fine and dandy drinking anything we want i'm drinking starship ipa voodoo ranger from new belgium um i'm just a sucker for any time the they come out with a new ranger that has fun can art like this one they have like a x-wing fighter for the ranger guy it's great Oh, okay. okay. I, I kind of want to start collecting these cans, but then I'd become that person. Um, <laughs> so, Mark, why are you here? What do you do? Uh, so, um, I released a open source CNC, 3D printed CNC, uh, a few weeks ago on Reddit, and I'm not sure which one of you, you three it guys, you, yeah, you, you jumped out to me and said you'd like to have me on the show, so I have nothing else to do today, so I might as well come and talk to you guys. Hell yeah. yeah. That's why everybody comes to talk to us, because there's nothing better to do. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm super excited about this CNC. It's the first one in a long time that Aaron has sent me that I didn't immediately go, that's a pile of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it's not a lie. That's a, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a bad exaggeration. But <laughs> yeah. Nah, it, well, yeah. it, it looks like a super solid machine. I have a ton of questions, but like we'll save those for a little bit. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Like maybe your inspiration behind the machine and like you know, yeah, all that? yeah, okay. Um, I guess like a lot of people, like I, I got my first three D printer about. Pretty much bang on 12 months ago, I bought it just before Christmas last year um, and did the rapid learn how to use Fusion and decided that 3D printing was a bit boring and I wanted a CNC. Um, so I went and made an MP CNC, like I think a lot of us do, and within about a day or two of putting that thing together went, yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. It's a good learning experience, but I knew we could do something better um, mm -hmm. and when I went out and started doing what I've done with the print and C, I just, I didn't want to be the, what was happening is everyone would make an MP CNC and then they'd either buy a Shapoko or they'd build an Ox builds or they'd buy a whole heap of AliExpress parts and just slap them together. There seemed to be a bit of a hole where it went from the real homebrew, that MP CNC, RS CNC thing to either an entry level commercial or just bolt a whole heap of extrusion together. Yeah. So I thought I'd try and take a bit of a different take on it. Yeah, I definitely haven't built an MPCNC because that was one of the ones that I went, I looked at it and I was like, nope, I don't think that's going to end up being a good machine. Um, yeah, look, it's it's an incredible piece of design. Some of like 
the center assembly is unreal. Yes. Um, yes. Even having held that thing and looked at it for ages, I still can't get my head around how to put it together and how it goes together, let alone conceptualize and then design it. So that just blows me away. But at the end of the day, it's plastic parts with cheap metal conduit. It's it's always going to bang up against limitations. So, yeah. you know, I haven't done anything yeah. revolutionary, but um, yeah. I think we've got something that sort of outperforms the that that MPC and C a fair bit. Yeah, it, when uh, when V one brought that out, I was like, "Yeah, this is neat," but I don't like it for like a <laughs> machine. <laughs> um, I did like the the low rider that they did. I thought that was a neat machine. Um, and we actually yeah. debated on building that one for the space for a little bit, just as like a project, not necessarily as like a space tool, but like a, a oh, low, um, low yeah. cost. My, my little, my little hint is that's the thing I've next got my eye on. So I started prototyping some gear for that last week and have a whole heap of stuff arriving in the next couple of weeks. So love it. The initial, initial prototypes I've done on that, I reckon we're going to have something proper special. Very cool. Nice. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Look, looking yeah, I, forward. I, I put it together last week and went, oh, damn, this is this is something. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully it, it, it holds up. Um, we should talk, because I'm in the middle of building a 4x8 right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, right now. Like, I was work, right now. working on design stuff before the call. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Working through issues. But... Um, so I, I'm looking through, I should have done this like three hours ago, at, at least, <laughs> but I've been, I'm looking through your assembly and like a couple of the things that stand out on your site is you have a, a NEMA 23 and a NEMA 17 version. Um, but most of your videos are the NEMA 17 version, just screaming yeah. through material. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's... I kind of wanted to just show what a rigid machine can do. Um, too many people write off NEMA 17s and go, oh, it's the it's the NEMA 17's fault. It's, you know, you just need more powerful steppers. I'm like, no, no, you need a more rigid machine. There is a reason that the professional guys are always saying rigidity, rigidity, rigidity. And all these commercial machines out there, like the Shapoko and the, uh, what's the other one, the X-Carve? Yes. They all seem to just ignore it and go, no, nah, rigidity doesn't matter, guys. It does. It does. If you've got, if you've got rigidity, you don't need huge amounts of torque. I'm oh, sorry, of of actual stepper power there. So yeah, that every every video I've got on that website's running NEMA 17s at the moment. I've got NEMA 23s and NEMA 24 sitting downstairs, but I haven't even put them on yet. I did it for a couple of proof of concepts, but yeah, Make, that's about as far as I've gone with them. Make sure the parts fit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just wanted to make sure that yeah. When I said, oh, this will fit the name of 23, it actually did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry, guys. That doesn't fit. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I completely agree no. with you because most of my big CNCs up until this point have been built out of plywood. And everybody shit on them because you can't build a machine out of wood. It will do this and that. It's like, well, I built everything out of torsion boxes. It's torsion boxes bolted to torsion boxes. So they're super stiff. Yeah. So I can machine aluminum at like seventy inches a minute and not yeah. have an issue. But um, yeah, yeah, Pe people really ignore that rigidity. Ah, uh, oh, it's yeah. Uh, you know my my sort of default feed rate's a hundred inches a minute now. Yeah, um, that's where I start and go plus or minus from there. And then when you see guys like I just when I started breeding the feeds and speeds that people were recommending of you know point one of a millimeter at like 600 mil or what's that what's that 12 uh, 50 inches a minute i'm just going i'm not leaving my router running for you know yes 10 hours to complete a job this is just madness yeah right yeah nibbling down so you're like the maslow then <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> so i don't like shitting on other people's projects the maslow is really <laughs> It's a neat machine. I don't see you making a lot of like really accurate things quickly with it, but it is neat. <laughs> Dude, it's it's awesome. And I, look, I'm I'm fully with you. I reckon like 
what I have done on the creativity side of putting together a a machine that's actually doing something different is extremely low. You know, the Maslow is is brilliant in its own way. So is the MPC and C. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've sort of taken the route of beefier stuff. Rails. That's an easy get out of jail free card to make a machine that's actually rigid. Um, I can't possibly compete. Like just the with the Maslow's running, is it DC motors with the optical encoders on there? Yeah. I desperately wanted to have the coding knowledge to be able to lift that out and take that and use it for my own purposes, but I'm just I don't have the skills to do it. And I'm like, man, there is some really cool tech out there, and there's some really impressive work being done. I think what I've done is I just stumbled onto a little section that was surprisingly untapped. Yeah. Well, have you seen uh, the Luma Labs micro? No, no. And now I want to Google, but I don't want to make the sound of a keyboard tapping. <laughs> <laughs> when when you Google that after this show, because you should, um, your machine is remarkably similar in like shape, but uh, very different in implementation. Um, okay. And that was part of why I liked this machine so much as soon as I saw it was because the micro was very revolutionary for its time. Like it came out like six or seven years ago uh, yep. before kit CNCs were like a really big thing. And yeah, yeah. Um, it, it had a much smaller build volume. I think the biggest version they had was uh, maybe two, 24 inches by 24 inches or 600 by 600 millimeters. Um, yeah, but it, they were machining steel with it. Um, and it had unsupported round rails and yeah. it used, uh, monolithic HDP blocks for the, uh, Y axis X axis kind of interface area, which doubled as a lead screw for, or a lead nut for a lead screw and the yeah. Y axis upright rail holders and, uh, lead screw, uh, mounts and like motor mount like it was it was this really neat design but it, it, it turned into this really rigid machine and they were using um the photom uh kind of like flex shaft spindles yeah uh because you know they couldn't carry a lot of weight but they could machine steel with the thing and uh you know it wasn't fast but it it was impressive with what they were doing with it and um, I always really liked that machine. And this, this harks back to that kind of design setup and the simplicity. Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw the um, the video I put of machining steel a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm, but, I was looking at it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was, I knew that was a shit idea. <laughs> 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 but hey, it, it worked. So I was, yeah, well, I, I managed to tie down those feeds and speeds the other day and actually got some decent results out of steel, which was nice. But yeah, I, I like watching carbide burn, so I enjoyed doing it. <laughs> <laughs> how, how low did you end up having to oh, go yeah. on the RPMs? Uh, I think I got down to, what am I running? Maybe sixteen thousand. Mine shows. Um, mine doesn't have RPMs. It just has the the hertz on there. Oh, so okay. you're sort of going to do a rough. I at some point I'll get around to actually putting a conversion table on my VFD. But there's a lot of things I should do that I haven't done yet. <laughs> are, are you using the gray ones, the like Huan Wang ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, those are pretty easy to to set up to hertz or uh, to set up to RPMs. Oh, I'm sure it is. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't know if you tried. Um, my, my favorite part of those is being able to run our RS485 through a USB and being able to, to control my uh, uh, RPMs through software yep. with that thing. Like that's Once I figured out how to do that, that was game-changing because yeah. I, I cut a lot of HDP. And drilling HDP at anything more than 10,000 RPMs just turns into a bird's nest. But, um, <laughs> and I, I had a job where I was running hours of drilled holes with HDP. So being able to kick it down to 10,000 RPMs and then right back up to 20 to cut it and without touching anything is just fantastic. I've been talking a lot. Do you guys have questions? Sorry. You should have hosted. Yes. <laughs> so you mentioned this is an open source design. Yeah. 
What uh, what license did you end up on? Uh, so I went um, open source is open source. So I, off the top of my head, I can't remember what it is, but it's the one that basically says do what you want. Just say that it originally came from me. Um, so it's, you know, if you want to go and print out kits and sell kits, if you want to, you know, go whatever route with it. Um, originally, I was looking down the non-commercial license. And then when the sort of... I don't know, how would you describe the the meltdown of Tom Sanderland and the MPCNC happened? And I just watched all that and I went, nah, nah, screw it, let's just go all out. So that's where we're at at the moment. Um, I think I've made $51 out of the whole project so far. So, <laughs> it, you know, I'm doing pretty well. Is that, nice? <laughs> is that after <laughs> all of your part costs and prototyping costs? And- Oh <laughs> God, no, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, that's what I thought. We don't talk about how negative we yeah. get in these projects. We just talk about the money that somebody no. gave us. <laughs> so, so, so it's a tax write-off. I just want to keep telling my wife. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I mean, the, like, uh, do you mind asking, like, what what's your normal day to day job? What uh, what do you what got you into this? Uh, I'm a pilot. So, um, oh, okay. the, I ended up here because flying is basically do what you're told, um, do the same thing as yesterday and rinse and repeat. Um, yeah. so this was my opportunity to go and do something completely different and, you know, explore the tech side and the creativity side. So it was kind of a weird experience for me because I, I had no experience with it and I saw a, you know, it was, I think, God, I can't remember what it's called, but it was $150. 3D printer which had an 80 by 80 mil build volume and I thought oh I might buy that and you know I don't know where this is going to go and I printed out my first thing and went oh damn <laughs> 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 so what yep. what was the first print because we all have a guess I'm sure but like what was your first print oh okay so this is in hindsight I actually realized it was quite the achievement I f- printed out a flexi rex but I printed it out with flexible filament Wow. Um, oh, okay. Which, in hindsight, Damn. pulling that off as my first print was a hell of an achievement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. for it being good and like. Yeah. Damn. And I, I'm like, oh, yeah, man, 3D printers are cool. And then I had about three months <laughs> where I didn't have a successful print after that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's about the game you play. So, yeah. I, like, have you upgraded since? Like, how many printers do you have now? Like. Uh, so I went and got an Ender 3 and spent. The typical just shit fight that is making an Ender 3 print properly. Um, and then last week I got an Anycubic 4 Max Pro, which has been game changing. That thing is freaking unreal. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, what, I, what kind it of? Took, it took me 10 minutes to set up. I unboxed it, plugged it, plugged it in, and since then I have not touched it. It's been awesome. Nice. Damn. What were, uh, what were kind of the hobbies you had before 3D printing? Like, what, what has kept you creative? Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Fair <laughs> I, enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I was uh, pretty heavily into my cycling. Um, so, I sort of raced a fair bit of and cruised around the cycling scene for probably 10 years. Um, and that left me so tired that I didn't really have um, the energy to be interested in anything else. Are you a roadie or a mountain biker? I'm All a roadie, right. dude. <laughs> yeah, you look like a mountain biker. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I've done my fair bit of road rides, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to my. <laughs> I'm good on that. <laughs> so you mentioned that you taught yourself fusion. Yeah, yeah. How did you go about learning that? Because I know that's kind of a big step for a lot of makers when they're finally getting out of like just printing what they download um Uh, how'd you go about learning that um that was i don't know it just it clicked i looked at tinkercad and went this doesn't make any sense to me i agree um yeah just i just went (laughs) i opened fusion and went this makes sense i watched a handful of lars Lars videos um and then just he gave me the basic tools and yeah i I was pretty fortunate. I've had a fair bit of time off work. Um, so I reckon I was like, I've probably put a thousand hours into that bloody thing this year. I've probably only put 200 hours into work. So I'm, 
<laughs> I'm doing a fraud on that front. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Fortunately, I understand that, too. Uh, <laughs> can, can I ask questions again without feeling bad? <laughs> yeah, you good, you good. I'm so many... Okay. I got one more question. So, uh, you invited us to the Discord forum right before the podcast. I didn't realize there's a Discord forum. Was that did that all start from the original Reddit thread? Yeah, yeah. So I'd never even heard of Discord because um, I think I'm realizing now that it's a games yes. thing. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm not a gamer kinda, at all. Kind of why I hate it. <laughs> okay. um, it's, it's not. It's not. Its purpose is, was was originally for game chat. Okay. And people make it a community thing out of it, and it's like shoving a square peg into yeah. a round hole. It's just not great. <laughs> okay. Chris off. is rolling his eyes He's hardcore. Not wrong. <laughs> I, I can see the gaming chair in the background there. So <laughs> yeah, I've got two of them. Unfortunately, like... <laughs> got that backup game chair. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah. So look, I, I'd never even heard of it, and uh, I got hit up by uh, one of the guys who said, "Oh." Um, chat to me on Discord because we were chatting over email and he was offering to help with a few different things. And he said, oh, this might be easier on Discord. And he's putting together a build assembly guide and a few different things. He's doing a friggin' unreal job. And we thought, why don't we open this up to see who else is interested? Um, so I think we opened up three weeks ago and we're up to about 120 people chatting in that chat at the moment. Um, That's awesome. Dude, the first week was insane. It was. <laughs> I bet. I was waking up in the morning and there was like 200 messages of just people getting excited and I'm just sitting there just going, yeah. what? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what did I yeah. do? It's Reddit um, with real time notifications. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, my Reddit inbox was just going bang, bang, bang. The tears cord was going nuts and my wife's just looking at me. She's like, what's wrong? And I'm going, you, you don't understand the amount of questions I'm getting asked. I've only got three hands. I can't do this. <laughs> 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 oh awesome. yeah i really yeah <laughs> well, hopefully <laughs> joe go yeah for power of hopefully source, you can though. throw people towards this podcast soon and you can be like yeah no we'll, we'll <laughs> definitely be doing that listen to me drink with these guys and uh we will answer some of your questions okay so i'm gonna rapid <laughs> fire a whole bunch of design questions at you uh, <laughs> so, why did you go ball screws over lead screws? Uh, because lead screws are shit. I dis disagree. Uh. <laughs> 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 so, I if you if you go back through my Reddit history, you'll see I actually originally built the machine using okay. lead screws. Um, and they were noisy. They just I. They had that little bit of backlash in them. Yeah, I know you can get anti-backlash nuts and all that sort of stuff. Um, and if you're trying to make, because mine's, what's mine, 1300 mil X carriage. I don't know. I can't convert yeah, them like... off the top of my head into uh, inches. So, you know, a 1300 mil lead screw is going to sag so much. You're going to be getting whip. You're going to be getting what all What size lead screws did you go with? So, I started looking. Uh, oh, just the little. Ah. I just had an eight mil. Oh, one. I'm sure if we went bigger. This is this is why you had problem. <laughs> ball screws are so cheap. <laughs> well, the thing is, ball screws are so cheap from China, and I, I have a bit of an issue where everyone goes, "Oh, you have to get high wind. You have to get the top of the line." Hang on, man. We can get ninety five percent of the quality for you know twenty percent or maybe forty percent of the cost. Get a whole heap of advantages of buying the Chinese gear. But people go, oh, it's not high when it's not worth using. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So that's how I ended up going with the um, the ball screws. And everyone seems to love ball screws. They get excited. Yeah. I have. <laughs> I, I feel different. Um, but I, I've spent a lot of time building CNCs. So, like, I, I've had a lot of experience on both sides. So, like, yeah, I, if you were using the, like, TR88 lead screws, I completely agree with you on lead screws or shit. But if you go with like um, like a half inch ten five start screw with a Delrin anti backlash nut, they they are just as yeah. smooth as ball screws, about half the cost. And the so the big thing is 
So how much are you looking at for one of those? Like, is it literally half the cost? Because then it's probably worth um, adding as an option. I can look it up. It's about you know for the for yeah. screws about this long. It would be probably about forty dollars for the screw and the nut. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, about half. Um, yeah. Interesting. Do you do you not have the whip with, no, with that size? Like, uh. I know people running. I well, we're running five foot long screws at the makerspace, which is um, fifteen hundred millimeters with no whip. Damn, Where are we doing at that? The, Where are we on doing the that Nubier, at? Space. The probiotics machine. I think they're five foot. I know. I I know. I know the biggest. <laughs> I know the biggest. Are you saying five probiotics feet? machine has a five foot screw and there's no whip on it? We are not okay. using a five foot well, screw. Shut up, Aaron. I, I know that I know the biggest. <laughs> are you kidding me? Pro, I know the biggest probiotics machine is five we, foot screws, and there's no whip. But if you four foot by uh, four foot, if you have the multi start screws, I guess the TR eight eights have a four start. But yeah, the multi start really knocks out a lot of the whip. Um, but the big thing with lead screws versus ball screws in a router is ball screws are very not tolerant to dust. And yeah, lead screws sure. don't give a, an F. They they don't care. They, they, they could be dusty, it could be chippy, it doesn't matter. And and if it does matter, it's 20 bucks to get a new lead nut. It's super cheap. You know, so... <laughs> um, are you running... I, I was trying to isolate the lead nuts in your screws. Yeah, so on there, there's, there's, there's no. no covers there. Um, it's something that we've added well i've i've started to add just to cover the rails and the ball screws but you know people can add those on there's a reason it's open source it's because if i tried to Mm -hmm. if i tried to tick off every box of everything that needed to be perfect from the outset it never would have got released totally agree are you running double nuts on the ball screws okay no no just the single so you you have some backlash there like yeah it's it's yeah surely unavoidable so yeah. Okay. I'll send you. I'll send you leads. Yeah. So, so what? What I find is where I find we sit. You know, we're looking at under a thousand bucks for a build between sort of seven hundred totally. to a thousand bucks for a build. At that sort of price, you're comparing against something that's running belts. Yes. Running like maker slides. Yes. <laughs> you know. So yes, there may be a little bit of backlash. It is a Chinese ball screw. You know, there's all these tiny little things. But let's not compare ourselves oh, against definitely us. Not. You know, let's compare ourselves against an X carve. So, um, there's, I think when you jumped into the chat before, you had some, you saw me talking to someone who was asking yeah. about putting high winds on, and I nah. basically came back and said, <laughs> "Dude, like, we, cool. Well, you can, <laughs> you know? but like at the same time, you're <laughs> yeah. bolting to steel, so that's not machined. Yeah, like this is <laughs> <laughs> this is construction grade skill with some 3D printed parts. You know, it's like strapping a Ferrari yeah. engine to a tricycle. And like, yeah, you know, for for comparison, yeah. my my <laughs> current machine has THK linear rails, which are like the next step up from high ones, uh, bolted to plywood. Yeah. So <laughs> 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 I got them for free. They were surplus from a machine shop, and I was like, all right. And I had no idea what I had at the time, and <laughs> and now I just look at them and I'm like, ah, the, my pretties, like they're they're still great. They're like not. seven years later, they've had zero <laughs> stress. But I I just bought uh, some Chinese linear rails. I probably they're actually the same model that you have in in your model, and I was blown away by the quality. Yeah, and, and they're they're ten and a half foot long and jointable in the middle, and they were. For two sets yeah. of ten and a half foot long jointable rails with shipping, they were two hundred dollars, and <laughs> <laughs> and they're <Shit>. great. <laughs> See, and this is what I don't get: people are looking at things and going, "Yeah, I can't. You know, I, I don't want to buy. Um, I can't afford high winds." They then write off all the Chinese gear, and then they go and use some six oh eight bearings no. instead. No, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't have perfection, Complete so I'm going to have shit. Complete. Okay. Uh, next question. Why do you have two motors on your x-axis? Uh, so, just on the um, 
on the 17. So, if you use NEMA 23s, okay. one motor. If you use the 17s, I put the two motors on there, probably because I got excited by the design process and I think it looks I will pretty agree. freaking cool. Agree. <laughs> um, it looks wonderful. You know. And I, I kind of wondered if that was why. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, honestly, I reckon maybe 80% of the time I spent on this design was making that thing, and making that thing parametric was an yeah. absolute bitch. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, look, you could probably get away with just the one on there, but it was just a, you know, it was a bit of a flex, and had I not done that, the rest of it was just some pretty basic <laughs> Yeah, actually, I really... I- <laughs> I, I just spent a lot of time designing something that's shaped very similarly um, with, like, a belt path and everything, and I really like your belt tensioner. Like, that's slick as shit. <laughs> uh, it was a prick. You've no idea. Like, yeah, I just spent a lot of time <laughs> designing something like this. What should have been the simplest part of the entire thing was, yeah, uh, <laughs> it I com- did my I head in. completely... I completely understand because my belt tensioner is very different um, and it was a, a bitch too. And, but yeah, you know, we got to the same place. Uh, I just <laughs> ended up not using it because it was such a bitch. Um, man. Yeah. What else? Um, do you have any problems with uh, getting your your long axis rails parallel. Okay. No. Um, I get asked that a lot. So the way I've installed them, and I rebuilt my machine four times. Um, I I built it twice in aluminium first and just wasn't getting enough rigidity, then went to steel. Um, And one of the rebuilds on the steel was after I cut the X gantry (laughs) 100 mil too short. Didn't realise that until I was putting it on <laughs> to the carriages. <laughs> put everything together. Put the Z axis on. Put everything. And I'm like, man, this thing is gonna be a base. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> 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 um, so we've got a video of of how you install it, and there's just a super cool uh, small assembly tool. Just draws a, like a a line down the middle of the the rails. Um, the assembly tools are actually what I think's kind of the the best bit of the whole design and then yeah just by putting the one bolt in either end and then just uh, running the x gantry up and down it sort of all self lines itself and you just tighten progressively um so far i've had no problems if you do it that way works well if you tighten everything down then put it on and then go oh why is it binding it'll cause you problems Um, yeah Uh, and also the the supplier i went through like their rails are straight which makes life a whole lot easier it really does because, like, even Mizumi and Hiwan don't guarantee straightness in their rails. Like, part of their design process yeah. is that you will machine a perfectly flat, perfectly straight shoulder to butt their rails up against and clamp them against while you're installing. Because they, they, they have no straightness yeah, tolerance. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, wave tolerance. Well, this is the thing that... Th- when I got the rails and I, I looked at the holes, you know, they're all quite oversized and I went ah you know they're they're literally telling me that this thing is going to bend itself into the correct position um that that surprised me because I hadn't seen you know I hadn't seen a a 20 mil rail before and I went I went to drop some m6 m6 bolts in there I'm going why the hell's this thing not fitting um read the specs I'm like oh dude they're they're m5s they're just oversized yep I did the same thing (laughs) I I looked at the CAD model I ordered m6 (laughs) bolts and then I looked at the specs and went ah shit when my M6s didn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And first time I tried to put it down, I went and really carefully with calipers, like measured out what are those 60 mil spacing, whatever it is, and like, oh, man, I've, I've nailed this. And I went and tap, 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 threaded everything, put it up. And of course, after about the fifth bolt, yeah. they were just miles out. <laughs> like, <laughs> you've just wasted so much of time. Plus, now I've got to flip it up and I've got to air. Yeah. So I've learned a lot from putting those bloody things on and off. I really basically. like um, your printed uh, drill jigs. They, I, that is one of my favorite yes. uses of my 3D printer awesome. and my laser cutter is to make drill jigs for 
projects like this and to see your implementation of them in this, it made me really happy. They, yeah, they, yeah, um, they work great. They work. <laughs> it, yeah. yeah. As I've gone through this project, every little bit of it, I'm just like, yes, good job. This made me happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's high that's high praise <laughs> it takes a lot to get done a compliment this much oh look, yeah i like it the, the, the thing is that those those drill guides i reckon are the bit mm-hmm. that makes the design work because the actual rise amounts the you know whacking some steel together none of that's anything you know anything revolutionary but it's like those little guides where you're putting each of those holes i've considered everything so that Pretty much every hole has two purposes. If it's not a, if, if you've threaded it, it might actually become the hole for the next part. So you've got access for your Allen key. It might become a hole that you're having to run a wire through. So we're not having friggin' wires dangling everywhere. Um, so I, I spent a whole lot of time just trying to make sure that every one of those, those holes was considered because it's a whole lot easier just to, to add an extra hole yeah. or bolt something on than it is to make sure the ones that you're doing have not just one purpose, but they're fulfilling, you know, every purpose they can. Um, okay. And the, the, the last thing that I was going to ask you is, have you ran into any issues with flex in your spindle mount? Because this looks like you're using the like standard uh, off-the-shelf AliExpress spindle mount bolted up to your high-end carriages. Yeah, look, it's got... A- a little tiny little bit of flex if i put the dial indicator on there yeah you can get it to you know you can get it to show that there's some flex there is it causing me any dramas performance wise no so um yeah it works what i really focused on with that z design there with those those carriages mounted is just simplifying everything Mm -hmm. as much as it could um, cause often the Z is where things started to get Z really hard. complicated. It's, it's the so hardest said, well, part. Why? Yeah. <laughs> well, if you have a look at it, um, if you turn off the, like the, the spindle and the bracket, you'll see that it's, it is a lead screw running down the Z. And then there's just that, what I call the T8 riser there that actually just clips in behind the flange carriages. So I went, well, hang on. If we've got those eight M6 hulls sitting there, that's effectively presenting us with a mounting point. So the way it's designed is that the two outer holes actually then mate up to a flange 2.2 spindle mount. Um, so it takes out a whole separate thing that we need. We don't need a face plate now. We can actually just drill holes into the sides of the flange and bolt oh, it straight on. Oh, that's slick as shit. <laughs> Love it. And so, like, that little T8 riser is such a tiny part, um, but it just literally just just clips into the behind the two. It's just like a press fit. Boom. Yeah. Done. There's your Z done. Yeah. And, yeah, so that, that, that spacing there will mate perfectly to the flange 2.2 brackets. Okay. I do have one <laughs> more question. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Have you read? I have. I, I have I one still, more answer. I have question. <laughs> Actually, I'm not. I'm gonna lie. Um, <laughs> have you read into heat issues with your motor mounts? No, no. So the um, mm-hmm. the dual the seventeen, yes. Which is, if you go onto the website, I recommend using PETG or ABS. Um, the rest of them, no, not really. You know, it's the the BK12 and the BF12 is taking all the force there. My mounts on my machine aren't even bolted to the steel. <laughs> They're like literally just sitting there. Just you could walk up and pull them off right now <laughs> if you undid the coupler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. Apart, like oh, so wh- where I was saying with the um, the original. Like the original X axis, that dual seventeen design was a two part thing, and the heat was mm-hmm. making making it warp because it was in PLA. Moved over to PETG, that was fine. Um, but okay. yeah, I've even, pretty I've much had no. P, uh, PETG even get gummy with motor heat, but 
Um, yeah, as long as you're like controlling that current and not just letting it go crazy. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, the the seventeen definitely is a bit more sensitive, but the twenty three ones, like, yeah, because because of the way those ball screws work with that, you know, that yeah. um, the BK twelve mount, you're pretty much just holding that motor you know, in place. It's not really that mount really doing a whole lot. Really makes the ball screws, I think, worthwhile. And now that, now that I shit on ball screws a little bit, and like, be, because like <laughs> even with lead screws, you have to figure out that mount. And I've never seen a purchased, yeah, like lead screw bearing mount like that. So, so maybe that really yeah. makes it all worthwhile. Some, yeah, I, I think it does. Because it, it takes a lot of engineering <laughs> out of it. I, in the past, when I've done lead screws on CNC machines, it's always been a hassle to try to figure out how I'm going to properly constrain this lead screw, whether I have to machine it or whatever. And yeah. you know, when you buy these ball screws from China, you can buy them pre-machined and they come so nice. Dude, it's a hundred bucks for a ball screw. It comes with, you know, the mount for either end, comes with the coupler, comes with the nut. You whack it down, yeah. you tighten it up, you're done. I think that makes it worthwhile. <laughs> it's like, I think it does. Yeah. So just add some like wipers in front of it, and you know, some, some. I yeah, think the exactly. double nuts might be worthwhile. So you 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 fight that little half mill or mill of backlash that you end up with. It'd be super easy to I, you'd, to implement. Like you'd literally just print out the front one, put it on the other side, well, like, bolt the two together, you job can, done. You can buy them pre-done, and it's just like it's a spring spring done. Yeah. Yeah, the oh yeah, that long yeah, yeah and they're I not the that much more about. expensive. Yeah. yeah, true. Like for this, there's uh, there's almost no, no reason like, to not do it. Like this yeah. this little steel section here for the Y axis <laughs> that might have to get a, a tiny bit longer. But like your your X axis that has plenty of length yeah. to be drop in for a double nut. Ah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> if you haven't gleaned this, I'm totally going to build one of these. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, me, yeah, me too. I, I'm tempted. I got to have a place to put it first, but I'm I'm like very much on the Oh, version. there's your NEMA 23 mount. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to be until I build my Elite Machine Works printer first. Because I probably can't convince my wife to spend <laughs> oh. more money on it. <laughs> okay. The last one that I have on my list right now. What control software are you using right now? Uh, so I've played with a couple because it, it started as a right. MPC and C. Um, literally, it that is where it was born. Um, so okay. it started as Marlin, um, which does my head in because 3D printer software mm -hmm. under a CNC just seems wrong to me. Um I've run Gerbil on it, that worked really well, and have run Mac 3, but, you know, really at the end of the yep. day, whatever you want, like, <laughs> it doesn't make a huge difference what you're controlling it with. What, uh, what Gerbil controller were you using? Okay. Oh man, just like a ramps board, um, Mega 5X with the, the ramps, cut off the D1 diode, hooked it up to, you know, cranked it up to 30 volts, and off we go. Um, name is 17 yeah. is at 30 volts. Yeah, really voltage well. equals speed, man. That's <laughs> that really that's, that's that's an equation that is legit. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, yeah, and it seems to be something that's overlooked. Like it's such a simple thing mm -hmm. with so little downsides. But why are we all tooling around at 12 volts? I don't know. All of my CNCs are running 48. Because um, I'm i running yeah. Linux CNC for most things. But you know, mo even with um, the Gerbil things that I've done, the Gerbil boards that I've purchased have taken the 48 volts no problem. Um, those were the gratis M1 Pros from Pancat. Like, yeah. yeah it, just, it just makes sense. Like, it makes everything work better, so I don't really see the no. downsides. 
What else you guys got? <laughs> uh, I'm really looking forward to freaking building one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, dude, like, just listening to you talk, it, it's it's one of those things where it's like, no, I can I can hear how much like you've thought this out, you've actually put in the work. Like, this is an incredible machine. I I, I really cannot wait to like start diving into the documentation and like actually building one for myself. What I might do, if it's cool with you guys, I might like point out a couple of the little bits you yes. wouldn't actually pick up, just you know, because I think you've only had the fusion file. Absolutely. So, uh, Sure. If you go and have a look at the mm -hmm. like the BK12 mount there, on the front of that there's a um, there's like a little, I think it's an M5 sitting just there. Yeah. I'm screwing in. All right. So that's actually that hole then curls around and goes down horizontal, allows you to run a wire through it. Because then if you look at the um, the H, what is it the um, the carriage, there's another M5 sitting, or it'd be an M6 sitting where you normally put the oil in, or put the lubricant in. Okay. Yeah, so those two actually will act as your um, end stop, because that that bolt on the carriage is actually electrically isolated from the, the rest of the thing. So the way that works huh. is you just run the, where is it, you're on a cable, one end goes through the BK mount, the other goes up into the, uh, what do you call it? There's a tiny little hole just under the ball nut there for you to pop your wire down. Then that runs over, goes up into the top, and that becomes your end stops. So you don't need physical <laughs> switches or anything like that. I dig it. <laughs> I like that. I dig it. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, and it, it works, man. Like, it works really, really well. And to have, like, no additional switches or anything anywhere, it just, it looks cool. So, are you running Hell yeah. in your software that um, you've done, are you running the two Y motors as um, independent axes when you home so you can square them? Nice. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, now, the other thing with that bolt there as well, the one sitting on the BK, that's like your micro adjusting for squaring it up. So if you extend it or bring it in a little bit, you can yes. square the gantry that way. Man. Okay. <laughs> I'm already messaging my steel guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I put I put a lot of time into getting those details those details right. Um, if you go up to the Z-axis now. Look, my fusion is just shitting itself. Occasionally, this fusion doesn't on this. Yeah, uh, <laughs> reliably for me. Uh, <laughs> so, where are we? Hold on, I'm just getting it. Anyway, if you look at the um, like either the NEMA 23 or the NEMA 17 uh, Z motor mount there. All right, so. The way those rails actually they extend about fifteen mil above the face plate. So the face plate's about two hundred and twenty five mil and you order a two hundred and fifty mil rail. So it gives you what's that, twenty five mil of just um mm -hmm. overhang on your face plate there. Then when you're putting the Z motor down so that it ends up like perfectly aligned, that actually has got a couple of cutouts in it, you just tap it down so it sits onto those rails, so it gives it a little bit of support. And it also centers it. The two bolts at the back there, they then go and secure the, the mount down. But they're also the same bolt holes that you previously used to connect the carriage oh, down. So it all just sort of yeah. clips down into one. Um, I was pretty happy with that design. So, there's so many elegant details in this. You can tell you put a lot <laughs> of thought into it. Yeah, uh, then if you, like, even the little, like, just the rear, fa oh, my Fusion's completely shit itself now, but even the rear face plates on the, the carriages, so, like, not the one where the ball nut's going in on the other side, I've made those slightly thicker because they're obviously not, don't have that big chunk of, you know, of nut sitting there stiffening them up, so I've made the hole a little bit smaller, made them a bit thicker, but then I've also chamfered the edges there just so that when you're trying to push those um, those bolts through, they're a little mm -hmm. bit easier to find the bolt holes. 
Because if you don't chamfer it trying to get it to <laughs> to fit in those holes, a real prick of a thing. Hmm. Hmm. Then if you go to, like, even on the frames, you've got um, like you've got four holes to secure in, and then there's that additional fifth hole there. That's just to allow you to run your your motor cables through. Um, and also on the NEMA 17s, the, the cabling's all hidden. That mm-hmm. runs through the, the mount itself. So you're not having janky cables hanging everywhere. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of like little details that I probably, probably could have got away with not doing, but you know, they work. Oh, and like the NEMA 20. They look beautiful. Yeah, the NEMA 23 mounts. So there's that. Like, you print them face down and then there's that 45 degree angle, um, which means that we get away with not having to have supports or anything like that. But that just means that you can then slide the NEMA 23 and it's a snap fit and it actually comes down and goes click in, which makes me really happy. And then you just run the bolt. The bolt then just goes through on the bottom and at the top you just put a lock nut in. So you're just using the bolt on the bottom as like a pen, Um, essentially. yeah, yeah, and it just goes straight through back up into the other side, yeah, and then, yeah. Um, where are they? But yeah, look, it's, yeah, I'm pretty happy with <laughs> what I've done, to tell you the truth, and it would have been a lot easier had I just made it as a one-off and said, this is the size, this is the size of steel that you need. Um, but I tried to say, well, you know, yeah, I can get 75, 50 mil, 6 mil radius steel at home, but if I want to make this open source, there's no point in just yeah. making sending people out looking for that. So in the in the parameters, like you can you can set it up for square steel, you can set it up for um if you know if your imperial measurements, we've got eighty by fifty coming out. Like yeah, I'm spent a fair bit of time making that happen. I think the fusion file that I've got on the website shits itself if you change any okay. of those parameters. So. <laughs> <laughs> but Just the one I've got bit. here, yeah, it's the one I've got here actually works. It it took about um, it takes about five minutes with each change at the moment, just because there's so many different things. It's always having to recalculate, but yeah, it works. Yep, yep. <laughs> so my, my plan was to build this big CNC, which is like purposely not super rigid because. I was making a lot of sacrifices and then I was going to build a smaller CNC to do aluminum and things and I think this might be it. There's no no reason for me to go around designing things when there's things <laughs> out there. Yeah, look, there's a couple of dudes that hit me up for like a really long version. Um, so, you know, we've yeah, sort of looked at Maybe getting rid of the ball screws and running belts for, you know, yeah. like they're talking two meters long, things like that. But, you know, the, the cost of hardware is so cheap, you can actually buy, build something pretty big. It's pretty rigid fairly cheaply. I guess if you're going to go big, it's better to go the long and like, yeah, long and narrow rather yeah, than Yeah, because your wide bridge will get twisty. Short, if you know what I mean. As it gets longer. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. But yeah, no, look, I'd, yeah, I'm pretty stoked <laughs> you guys even had interest in it. So. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's the plan going forward? Like, you've got a bit of a shop set up, and you're selling, you're, you brought the sell kits and stuff. Like, what's the plan? Uh, there's not really any plans to make, um, make it into a profit venture. Um, it's sort of, it is filling my time of, giving me a creative outlet. Um, I just want to see where it goes with the open source, um, see what other people can do with it. You know, it'd be awesome if someone can do a fourth axis, um, you know, see if people can make cheaper versions, lead screw versions, big, small. We've got some renders of some really small versions, which look awesome for the super solid, but I reckon that I sort of lucked it by hitting on a, I don't know, a bit of a niche where people wanted to still build a machine that was actually capable. They weren't getting that satisfaction out of just, you know, 
whacking some extrusion together and buying some off-the-shelf parts. So I reckon, I reckon that it sort of excited people over making making a CNC from scratch that's got a bit of capability behind it. So I just want to see where it goes. Yeah. I'm not too fussed from this point forward. Yeah, the I've been really unhappy with a lot of the CNC kits that have hit the market. <laughs> To put it lightly. So, this is exciting. <laughs> um, <laughs> what What's your favorite thing that you've yeah, made look, with yours so far? Yeah. Other than more machines. You can't say that. That's that's the only thing you can't say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, this has consumed me. Um, realistically, I made a speaker a while ago um, because I felt like I should probably make something <laughs> with my machine. doesn't sound familiar at all. But... Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as this one's getting closer to to a completed project, if it ever really can be, um, I'm getting excited over designing the next one, um, which will be something completely different. Uh, but yeah, so I have made nothing. All right, where I'm going with that? <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I've cut a lot of holes to prove that it's accurate. There is more. You're only proving it to yourself. The internet will always argue with you. Yeah, I, I run upstairs with a chunk of steel. I'm showing my wife, and she's like, "Wow, <laughs> go back yes. downstairs, honey." Yeah, so exciting. <laughs> yeah, your, your wife and my wife are similar people. Yeah, I've, I've got I've got a six month old baby sitting downstairs, and I'm getting more excited about the hole I God. just cut with a piece of steel at the moment. So I think <laughs> I just, like I moved to Australia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had something I was going to ask, and I lost it. Well, I mean, what else are you excited for with this thing? Like you said, so you said you were excited to see where people were going to go with it. Um, where I really want to see it go, what I would desperately like to see is uh, DC motors. Closed loop, not just going and buying a closed loop kit. I reckon we're getting closer, um, but it, to me that seems like the logical path of the sort of DIY CNC should be going. Um, mm. You know, that is what I want to see. If Maslow can do it with what they're doing, yeah. we should be able to do it and strap them onto something. That's what I want to see um, because I reckon, you know, Closed loop on that, and we're looking at sub a thousand dollars for a machine that can pull off some pretty awesome things. So that's that's what I'm hoping for. Fingers crossed. I don't have the coding skills to do it, unfortunately. But with the amount of people who are sort of reaching out and keen to get involved, hopefully yeah. someone. Who yeah, we've does seen like the Macaduinos and happen. stuff that have come out that have been really cool. And then like there's like the clear path motors. Yeah, but the clear path motors blow the pricing. Just by buying them, yeah. Like, like NEMA twenty three versions are like two hundred and twenty dollars a piece. Yeah. So. Yeah, but what what I don't get like there's nothing there's nothing technically difficult about those. We just need someone with the skills, or you know, a bunch of people to go. You know what? We're going to make this happen. Um, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully, I reckon there's some exciting things coming because just. The way that prices have dropped recently, you know, the availability of parts, what we, get, what is, you know, yeah. what is in the future gets me excited, what we're going to be able to pull off. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sort of heavily dependent on that open source, you know, community being able to, to bring it all together now. I like it a lot. Yeah. If only we had some, uh, yeah, software Aaron. engineers interested in. CNC machines. Well, yeah, it's funny you say that. So the guy who started the um, who started the who taught me about Discord, I guess he's a software engineer. Um, so he opened up the Fusion file, and I was bitching and moaning to him, going, "Man, it's taking me like forty five minutes to generate the STLs, to put them up, to reorientate them, to get them ready to go." He's like, "Oh, hold on, man." Comes back like twenty four hours later, sends me a Python script that allows me to put all the different parameters in there, orientates them perfectly, <laughs> does the whole thing. It's like, uh, would this help you out? <laughs> like, <laughs> what the... <laughs> yeah, and he's done these... Uh, he's written another script that makes, like, uh, orbiting renders of the, the machine. 
I'm just like, man. Ooh, nice. Yeah, it, I'll, pu- I'll put him up onto the print and see subreddit so you can see him. I think he posts. But I'm just like, this is insane. Uh, we got another guy who's writing the most detailed build assembly guide. Like, put the bolt here, put this here, you know, screen nice. captures of everything. It's like something from an Ikea catalog. And I'm just sitting back going, This is how you know you've done a good project when you have <laughs> people actively contributing, like, by their own merit. Like, that's that's major. Yeah. I, I think the main thing is because I came out and was very open about saying this is truly open source, you know, here's the fusion files, here's the step, here's everything you need to take it, you know, take it where you want to go. People have been more enthusiastic to do that. Had I turned up and gone, here's a bunch of STLs. Yeah, you know, STLs are a prick. Yeah, to I, I with, think that's. So. I think that was a uh, a good move on your part. I I love it. I want to hear more about your big machine that you're talking about. <laughs> I said I want to hear more about the big machine. We were sorry, I missed what you said the there. But later, if you want, uh, <laughs> it's gonna. So it will be full sheet, um, and I'm hoping. Like proper, proper edge to edge full sheet. Okay. With an unlimited Y. Um, we're talking. So the, the test runs I did, I've got some, some pretty rough, uh, performance specs that I want to make sure I hit. So we're looking for being able to achieve 200 inches a minute. That um, two. So as if we can get 200 inches you know, a minute rapid or cutting? I'm just picturing something. Sorry. Okay. I'd like to see 150 okay. inches cutting and a minimum of 200 for a rapid. Because um, if you're doing full sheet, then who wants to go to a no line of 50 inches a minute? And no one. one. Depths? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, look, it's it's really, really early stages. Um, semi, the, the other thing that I'm, I'm really working towards is making it sort of semi-permanent fixture. So, it's the sort of thing that you don't necessarily need a three-metre CNC sitting in your workshop all year round. But if you can pop it up, have it on a three-metre bench in, you know, 10 minutes and have something running, Mm -hmm. then when you do need that capability, it's there. So, the way it is the way it is at the moment, the unfortunately, I haven't haven't really cuts on it. I've just got a moving gantry. You can sort of put it up, strap it down, off you go. 10 minutes later, pull it off. So, kind of like the Maslow idea where you can, you know, you can use it when you need it and then put it in the corner when you don't. That's where I want to go. Um, it's going to be less DIY, more something that, you know, comes semi-assembled, I hope. But that's that's sort of my, awesome. f- my focus at the moment. I love it. Fair enough. Yeah. If it works, it's going to be... If it works as well as I'm hoping it will, I think it's going to be good. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty quietly confident with All it. All right. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, so where can people follow the Print NC project at? Um, so we've got the subreddit. Uh, unfortunately, most people are just jumping in the Discord at the moment, and that is going nonstop. But yeah, Print NC. Um, Subreddit, I'm trying to post there. I'm trying to convince people to post their photos to that as well, not just the Discord because it disappears into into the ethos. Um, there is a Facebook page which is extremely lacking because I don't have a personal Facebook, so I have to go and remind myself, oh, I have to go update that. that. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> oh, look, man, I got rid of all social medias about, I don't know, 18 months ago. Um, I'm not saying that that directly correlated to this project, oh, but I reckon <laughs> a pretty big part. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I just shut all that off. I got rid of the smartphone, got rid of everything, and suddenly found myself with more time. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, m- mostly the subreddit um, is, is where to go for, for things at the moment. And if you want to get involved in just constant chat on the discord that's a really good spot spot to jump in we've got um yeah it's growing all the time awesome fair enough well i really like this project i hope to see lots more i want to nerd out with you a lot more so feel free to hit me up 
or with ideas <laughs> and I will. Yeah, that was fun, well. man. But do you guys have anything else? <sighs> okay. Well, with I'm that, I'm good. Uh, this was Makers on Tap. You guys should keep making stuff. This is the end of the there podcast. I was almost going to say, are you going to say it? Because you missed it last time. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good week, guys. <laughs>